All right, welcome back, everybody. We're now going to look at module 0 0.5, which is going to cover the basics of research design and ethics in psychology. So um, how do we go about designing our plan to answer a question? And how do we make sure that we're not, you know, that we're not doing anything wrong? Because, you know, we got we to we be good people in everything we do. Um, we can't, you know, go about life, you know, killing people and sh shooting, you know, that's, I mean, you know, you know, we got to always have morals and whatever we do, but how do we, you know, regulate that um, and make sure that it stays honest and, and we're strict about it. So um, let's first go over research design, which is um, going to basically break down into two groups. We're going to have observational studies and experimental, experimental studies or experiments, experimental. Now, this is really going to be um, based off of what you're trying to figure out. Like the cool thing about psychology, or one of the cool things is that you can virtually ask anything like you can ask, like, um, does the number of words you speak in your life um, have a relationship with how long you live. Like, do people who talk more live longer? Or do they live shorter? Um, th does um, does exercise really cause you to live longer? Does like running like every day are you gonna live longer than someone who like maybe never ran in their life? Like um, these these are questions that can be studied in psychology. But as you are probably thinking right now, is, are is that those questions can lead to other questions because there's so many things to consider. Because maybe like people who talk a lot have a lot of friends. Maybe they live um, a healthier lifestyle. Maybe they live in better environments. So maybe it's not really the talking that's causing them or leading them to live longer. It's the socialization or the well-being that's leading to them being uh, healthier and stuff. So there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, and that's what honestly makes psychology even more interesting because we can see like um, a lot of patterns and how like complex and how simple humans can be at times. And it's not going to be simple to answer these questions, but nevertheless, there the question, there are so many interesting questions that you can come up with in psychology. So um, observational studies, the main ones I would say that you'll probably be familiar with and you know use and see throughout your life are surveys. And um, essentially just like data gathering, data analysis. Um, I mean, I, I, maybe case study, let's say surveys, case studies, case, case, case studies, and then and just data, I would just say data analysis or data gathering. But I'll say data analysis because you're going to essentially, in, in this one, you're just looking uh, you're looking up data that's your, uh, um, maybe two things you're trying to um, understand. Maybe you're trying to understand the relationship between income and um, like uh, income and just, you know, like, uh, um, like cancer, how, like how often they get cancer or something, um, health, income and health, um, that sort of thing. Um, case studies will be like, in situations where like you're going to be studying something that's really rare maybe like a really rare brain disease um that very few people in the, in the population have so like if you want to help you want to find how we can prevent that disease it, it'll probably be best to, to study the individuals that have it over like time see how maybe like um their their um their childhood uh maybe they live in an area that had a lot of chemical plants. I don't know, it's just something like, um, something that would be rare and you can't study, um, you can't, like something that's rare and hard to find um, is, are, is really what comes to mind. And surveys, you know a lot of surveys. You just send out pieces of paper to people and they answer it. Now that we send texts. Um, and we're gonna talk a lot about that. But um, you're basically doing nothing with the data. You're just like looking at it and trying, trying to find, trying to see if you can find some um, pattern or relationship. With experiments, you're doing something. 
you're going to have um, a variable that you manipulate and try and, and trying to see if um, it can change or cause another variable to be different. So you're trying to look for a cause and effect relationship. And you probably look at some or done some experiments in science in your science class, maybe bio, chemistry. So um, you have again two variables. Maybe you're looking at a. Um, so you can call it the independent or um, independent or the explanatory variable. Independent variable is maybe x, and then the dependent is y. And you're trying to see if does x cause y to change. So like maybe um, <laughs> does like a the number of hours that you sleep affect your chance of being in a, in a, in a car crash. So maybe you're gonna um, only sleep one hour one night and then you're gonna drive, you know, um, um, all the way to Vegas for like five hours. Another day you're gonna sleep eight hours. And, and then another time you're gonna stay up for three days straight and see like, um, see what happens. <laughs> now don't do this because you're probably gonna crash and I'm bringing that example up because um, just because we can think of a question and just because we can think of how we can um, study that question doesn't mean we should do it because doing something like that is very dangerous and it's unethical. It, it's, you know, it can lead to people killing themselves. So um, when we're trying to answer questions, it's that we're trying, we're trying to answer a question in psychology, we really have to think critically about how we can go about answering that question. I know that um, when cell phones first came out, um, I know a lot of you probably, you guys have lived your whole lives with cell phones, but I'm old and it came out like, you know, when I was like in high school, um, they were like looking at data. They didn't, well, they didn't have data, but, was, but, but they were starting to notice that like there are more car crashes, um, due to texting. People were using their cell phones, um, while driving and it just, you know, led to people, you know, obviously getting into more car accidents. And um, you, that's, a, that's something you're not going to be like, oh, let me see if this is true. So I'm going to have a, you're going to have 50, you're going to have 50 of your classmates. They're going to say, you 25 are going to um, drive from here to, you know, to Las Vegas. And you're going to use your cell phone the whole time. You're going to, you're going to type an essay on it the whole time. Make sure you type that essay, like a you know, the hundred page long essay on their cell phone while they're driving to Vegas. And then the other 25, you're going to not, they're not going to use their cell phone at all and see if the, one group gets in car crashes more than the other. Now, again, don't do this because that's, again, something that's very dangerous and you're probably going to kill a couple people. And you, and you don't want to do that because because that's, again, against ethics and or it's immoral. It's wrong. So we have to always think about these um, factors. And in that, in answering a question like that would, would basically be best done by looking at just previous data, maybe see after, like look at the data of car crashes and see like what was going on with those people. See if seeing if it, what percent of car crashes are were caused or had the, the um, driver texting or using their cell phone, that sort of thing. And it's actually a high percentage, unfortunately. I don't know if it's unfortunately or fortunately, but unfortunately because they crashed, but um, you can control it, just don't text. So it's something you can control. So I mean, maybe it's a good thing that that that's why, because you can control it. But yeah, just don't use your cell phone while driving, please. Now, um, all right. So when so the, on the oh yeah, quantitative and versus qualitative. When we're talking about quantitative research, quanti quantitative. This is really going to be like when we're involving um, like a, a, a continuum or a numerical scale, something that's measured um, on a scale. So like your weight, um, your height, like number of, number, of, number, of, number of siblings, that sort of thing. Qualitative would be like um, something that can't be quantified or something that can't, you know, something that can't be like counted um, on, a, on a scale. Qual it's Qual it 
I'm going to make that a little more clear because I know they're very similar, but you guys have probably already looked at this in science qual. It's hated. So like groups, maybe like um, Harbrand. Maybe like um, hair color, that sort of thing. So maybe you want to see if there's a relationship between your hair color and how good of a driver you are, um, how, um, how good you are at sports, how athletic you are, um, that sort of thing. Now, um, again, it's all, it's all this stuff, no matter what we answer or no matter what question we're studying, there's always going to be variables that we have to consider, which we know like, as confounding, which I talked about previously. And um, there are ways we can reduce confounding, but it, it really is um, something that always has to be considered. considered. And, and this is really why we um, will we'll want to do things in a controlled environment or a laboratory setting, we'll say. Let me erase some of this. Switch it. Let me just erase this stuff. Yeah. So, like in the lab. Now let's think about some questions, or a question that uh, that would be appropriate in a control setting. Because um, again, a, con a laboratory is not like the real world. Like, te like testing some question, and like, and like in this classroom right now, it's not going to be the same as you know testing it out. Um, you know on the, you know, on the playground, you know, or whatever, whatever. It's, diff it's a different environment. So we sim we simply want to see um, if some sort of a um, relationship exists between, uh, between um, two things that we can group into like a, into like, a, into like a group. Let me give you an, ex let me give you an example. Cause that was a very, I worded that very poorly, but let's, Let's say like, um, does being uncomfortable cause someone to be like more rude? Let's like the comfort, let's say comfort level. I don't know why I'm using red. Comfort level. Comfort level. And let's say, let's say aggression actually, let's just say aggression being rude, right? Aggression level. Now, like, how can you, um, you know, quantify a comfort level? Well, you can do things like um, you can maybe um, put a bad smell in a room, like in a lab. Maybe put like a fart smell. So when the when the subjects come in, you have this farts, disgusting fart smell, and they're like, like, what the hell is this? And they can't get away, and then they're just stuck in here. And then you're telling them to like, uh, to rate. Um, all these people on these surveys um, with, you know, how, how intelligent do you think this person is? Or what do you think about this politician? What do you think about blah, blah, blah? You ask them to rate like all these people. Um, and then in another group, you have them be like in a very, like, like, un like a crappy chair, like a very pokey chair. So they're also uncomfortable. And then you also ask them to rate like the, these people. So like comfort level is not just like um, fart smells. It could be like you know being like a a, cr a, a crushing a, like a, like a cramped chair or in a, or like you know um, in a hot you know humid room or in a noisy room or like um, yeah. Where you're so we want to see does your comfort affect like how mean you are, how aggressive you would be towards someone? Um, because then we can then we can generalize it and 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 actually uh, um have more, have, have more, um, have more, have more, have answers to more questions than just having specific like um, situations because we don't want to have just specific situations um, that we um, can answer because there's so much, there's so many things in the real world that we can't just, we, there's so many things we can consider. So we just want to see in general, does being uncomfortable make you more mean? We don't want to be like the smelling a fart from five feet away from a, from a, your boyfriend or girlfriend cause you to then um not pay for dinner less or something <laughs> you know just we want to just have a general um idea of what comfort level does to your to how mean you are i guess sorry for that weird or run-on explanation but 
I'll, I'll try to make this one a little more clear. Okay, so something that um, I'm sure we all have an opinion on is um, experiments on animals, like exper experiments with animals. Now, um, as you probably understand, when we're trying to figure out um, a new medication for a, maybe a disease or a cold or just, you know, something to help, you know, humans, we we're going to we're gonna have to test, you know, these medicines first. We can't just be like, you know, shooting these things into people um, and killing people, you know, oh, whoops, that one didn't work. Let's try another one. Oh. No, that one didn't work either. Oh, that one caused a person to explode. Oh, that one caused a person to, you know, um, you know like jump out their window or you know, that sort of thing. We want to, well, not that sort of thing, but we want to, we want to, we want to be careful about the medicine that we're gonna um, prescribe to, you know, thousands of or millions of people, um, because we don't want it to hurt them. So we have to test them rigorously beforehand, and there's always an issue because. And there's always an issue dealing with ethics because like who do you test it on then and animals it's like it's like well why should they be tested on just because we um you know are smarter than them and that we have you know we have the ability to like well, what makes us better than them and yeah so like it's not easy to like answer these and again there's not really a right or wrong answer because um like like what do we do then it's like well so we just we just are we just going to kill people? Or are we just going to stop inventing medicine? Um, if you have an answer like that can solve all of this and not avoid, let us know, please, because that, that'd be great. But um, yeah, me personally, I can understand. Like, yeah, we would have to we, we can test that we need to test animals, but um, I can also understand. Well, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm more for that. But um, personally, I. I I think that um, we need to we have to be, we need to be more clear about what medications are important um, to to actually have first versus those that are just like more of a like over the counter sort of thing like you know cough medicine those sort of things like are those being tested I mean I don't really know much about the medical field when it comes to testing but I don't know if, are like cough drops tested before someone can sell them like I don't think like different brands of cough drops should be you know tested on animals. Um, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, everyone has an opinion. Um, and that's a good thing, because that, that, that's what keeps life interesting. And um, now, this then leads to like a big, uh, a big factor when it comes to uh, an, an important factor when it comes to experiments and studies is that when you're um, trying to answer a question, you may have to like put a person or you know put the subjects in a potentially like not potentially harmful situation but not anymore in this not not so before they would do like um experiments where you would uh like you could potentially traumatize people i think they had one where they made babies like uh um, cry at the, at the at the sound of like a bell or something like that. They condition babies to be, you know always cry, and so then like they, I don't know what, if they kept on crying throughout their whole life. But but um yeah, we don't we can't do things like that. But like I ha actually watched this um this show a while back, and it was it was basically seeing how um a person who just won a lot of money would respond to like a person that they saw who was in need and um was about to almost essentially get not get killed but something bad was about to happen in him so let me so to break it down essentially these people were in a casino and they uh won one like big at this game they won like like i think like 10 grand or something and then um as they're winning 10 grand they they like hear like this like some like commotion to the side over to the side and they see this guy kind of being like tackled and like 
by these like mafia looking guys and like, yeah, will you give us our money, you know, blah, 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 blah. He's like, no. And then the guy's like, like basically scared for his life. He's like, I, I, I swear I'll have it for you. I, I just don't have it right now. And the, the, the person who just, the, the subject, the person that they were, the person that was a subject in the um, study saw this. They were, they, were, they were close enough to hear and see the person. And ultimately the person that was, you know, being tackled by these guys, like, hey, what you, do you, do you think I could just borrow like a couple thousand dollars? Like, please, these guys are going to kill me. And, that, and that, he, he was really, he was a really good actor. It made, made them really um, believe that he was about to, you know, get killed or kidnapped or something. If he didn't, if he wasn't able to get a couple thousand dollars right then and there. And so they wanted to see like, who would give him some money? Who would give this stranger some money? Like, would anybody actually give him money? Would they be like, F you, suck? you know, like, would they, would they actually care for a complete stranger? And they all did believe that he was, he was um, actually, you know, going to be like, you know, taken away or hurt. It wasn't that they like didn't believe him. They all believed him. And out of like the five people, only one person gave him money. They, he's like, yeah. And I think he was like almost his whole amount. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but. One, it was just this one guy that gave him all his money. All the rest were kind of just like, they acted like they, they, they didn't see him or they ignored him. Like, well, oh, I'm sorry, I need this money. Even though they just won the money right there, it was just a free money. They acted like, they were very like, uh, you know, like defensive. Like, no, and they were just trying to get away from him. And the guy was very persistent. But this one guy was very, uh, it, it was good to see because he was like very open. Like, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I want this person to get killed or harm them. I mean, yeah, of course, they'll give him money, not a big deal. And then what was interesting is that the guy didn't, like if we're gonna go into stereotypes, he did not look like a guy that was like gonna be a. He was like a macho, big looking guy, like um, that uh, you know, looked athletic and was like, um, you would think was like a security guard or you know somewhere or something. But um, he was very like, like receptive and very kind to the guy. They didn't really even, like hesitate and just said, yeah, and, and you can use. It. Yep, you need it more than I do, and um. After 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 the show ended, all the all the um, subjects were then told about that this was just a, this was just a a study and this is an experiment. They wanted to see what would happen, and so of course, like these people were the people that didn't give him the money were probably like like they they like I don't want to look bad. Like this is like am I a bad person? Am I going to be embarrassed? Um, ultimately, they gave the show permission to air this, and this is what we call informed consent, or this is a form, or this is a version of informed consent, giving like the experimenters or the scientists, not informed contest, informed consent, giving them permission. What am I writing? Informed consent. There we go. It's giving the people, the scientists in charge of the study permission to, um, use their findings, make their findings public. Um, and I assume that they are probably paid off. They are probably paid extra money, not paid off, but they were like, Hey, here's some extra money for, you know, cause this is embarrassing obviously for you. But the guy, you know, the guy who did the good deal was probably, like, yeah, of course I want everyone to see how cool I am. I'm um, probably, you know, probably got, you know, a lot of um, DMs or whatever. But I was, well, actually they, that was, this is way back before uh, and all that social media stuff. But, um, this is an issue because if you're going to be doing um, experiments dealing with situations like these, then there's going to be people that are going to be like, I don't want people to know that about me. I don't want people to know that I just like, um, that I cheated. I, I would cheat on my girlfriend if, if someone gave me ten thousand dollars. I don't want to know, I don't want someone to know, but know that I, I will, I'll do a hit and run on somebody if I if I know I can get away. Like like it, these things are like. Um, tricky to to answer and tricky to study because like what are you going to do like you're going to like be like oh well, too bad sorry i'm going to run away and um this is this is going to be always an issue because sometimes we don't know what didn't get published and i, I mean I, that causes me to always think about that and um this is going to be like leading to like the most important factor that we have to um, remember to uphold and to be very strict about is the um, is the honesty of the 
scientists, the honesty of these psychologists, the honesty of every um, one of these, you know, um, researchers involved in the study, because like these are very sensitive topics potentially, and they have important implications and they can lead to other, you know, studies. So if you're, if you're going to be a researcher or a scientist that's lying about your data, that's lying about your study, like, like, the, like this is, this is going to be, this is like a, this is, is going to be horrible for like, for like the world, honestly, like people, it has, it's a big deal. It can be, it's a very big deal. So um, they are very, very strict about this so that if, if anyone or any scientist ever like is caught, you know, doing something unethical, like lying about data, they automatically have their um, um, license, um, credentials um, taken away and they can't, and they no longer, they're no longer allowed to, you know, to practice psychology or whatever science they're doing. And I, and I agree with that because we have to be very, very strict about this stuff because honesty is something that I always try to remember to tell people or, you know, even my students that at the end of the day, all we really have control over is our honesty and our, I also would like to add, this is, a, this is not in the section, but our honesty and our like work, our work effort or ethic, like everything else, we don't really have control over. We don't have control over like how, how good looking we are per se. Like some, you're just born sometimes with certain looks and sometimes you're going to be born tall, athletic or whatever, but you can always control how honest you are and how hard you work. And um, it's important that we're very, very strict about it. Anyways, um, yeah, that's it for that section. Sorry for some of the rambling, but that's what I do. But, and of course, give me feedback because that's what I need to get better at this. And leave me any questions you have in the comments section. And, and you know, give me a thumbs up if you thought it was okay. And subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.